hello children we have to do the c part of sound chapter characteristics of sound uh, by the way the radio syllabus has come but not much is reduced okay so this part c part this part is cut off characteristic of sound subjective and objective nature that is cut off okay so in the syllabus uh, what they have given is if you turn to page number 148 loudness pitch and quality there are quite a lot of things so they have cut off everything and they have just written meaning of the terms and factors affecting them okay meaning of the terms and factors affecting them no example so so that makes this part very less so we'll be quickly doing it today okay so characteristics of sound this you have done in 8th standard but i don't know how much you remember so when you talk about sound okay what are its various characteristics three characteristics are there loudness the other name is intensity pitch or shrillness quality or timbre please get familiar with these terms loudness or intensity pitch or shrillness quality or timbre okay so these are the three characteristics we are going to see about sound first we'll see about loudness so only three things you need children definition diagram and factor affecting rest all is cut okay happily you can strike them off do with a pencil please okay so this part all struck i'll tell you later so now um so definition loudness is the characteristic by virtue of which a loud sound can be distinguished from a faint one okay so this is the main thing loud sound can be distinguished from a faint one both having same pitch and quality both having same pitch and quality so this is very simple yeah uh, the volume control of any of your device determines the loudness of sound you keep it in less volume you will hear a soft sound you keep it in faint one or soft one if you keep it if the if you keep this volume more or increase the volume then you're going to hear a loud sound or other example could be the roar of a lion is example of a loud sound the buzzing of bee is a faint one so loudness is that characteristic that helps us to differentiate a loud sound from a faint sound next is the diagram next is the diagram now i want you to draw the diagram along with me because so please put the heading characteristics of sound characteristics of sound okay so we are going to draw the graph okay there are certain things you have to remember in that so we are going to first we are going to do of soft sound and a loud sound so loudness so yeah you better use a scale children so i'm not drawing a straight line okay so you put one long y axis and then two x axis okay time in the x axis and displacement in y axis in sound all the graphs will have time in x axis displacement in y axis okay now what the two sounds see it's important that their pitch should be same so what you do pitch should be same means um the frequency should be same okay so what you do you put dotted lines like this so and this wave is a soft sound it means it has to have less amplitude so i'm going to draw a wave of a smaller amplitude i'm 
and mark here A. This is the amplitude. Next diagram we are going to draw of a loud sound. So its amplitude should be more than that. So you draw a little amplified should be more. So here if you use two lines here you take three lines. And then mark amplitude. Is it clear children? So I put these dotted lines to make sure that the frequency is same. Okay. That is the length of the wave should be same. Should not change. So I hope you are clear with this. So please draw this in your notebook. Use scale and pencil. And please follow all these instructions that I have told you. So what is our conclusion? Loudness depends on amplitude. So, factor affecting loudness. Loudness of sound depends on the amplitude of the wave. Okay, children. So, that's all. Definition, diagram and factor affecting. Rest all you can. Strike it off. As I told you, gently with a pencil. Please strike off this, this and come here. Pitch or shrillness. That's the second uh, factor that we are going to study pitch or shrillness um, now i want you to before drawing the diagram write the definition first okay write the definition then draw the diagram then write the factor affecting factor affecting is amplitude is it clear so under loudness i want you to first write the definition then draw this diagram then write factor affecting loudness is amplitude okay next we go to the second factor second characteristics that's called pitch the other name is shrillness pitch or shrillness now what is pitch basically there are high pitch sound and low pitch sound Okay, simply women, uh, a women's voice is a low pitch sound and it will be sharp, shrill, yeah. Men's voice is, sorry, women's voice is a high pitch sound or it's a shrill sound, okay. There are basically two possible sounds, <coughs> shrill and flat, okay. Shrill will be high pitch and generally women have this sound. Flat, okay, boy's sound generally is like mm, the bass part is more, right? So that's called low pitch. That's called low pitch sound, okay? So pitch is that characteristics that helps us to differentiate between a shrill sound and a flat sound, okay? So pitch is that characteristic of sound by which and shrill note. Okay, there's another way a name for that acute. If you write shrill, it's enough children. Shrill note can be distinguished from, instead of grave, I prefer flat one. Flat note of same loudness. It's important to write same loudness. Here it was of same pitch and quality. So here, so you, pitch is that characteristic that helps us to differentiate between a shrill note and a flat note. Now, let's see how to draw the diagram of a shrill note and a okay so what you do as usual first you write the definition okay definition you can copy down from the book then come into the diagram so again you draw a long y-axis and two x-axis time time and displacement so First we, are going to, uh, first, we are going to draw a low pitch sound. 
low pitch or flat sound then we are going to draw a high pitch high pitch or shrill sound okay low pitch or flat sound high pitch or shrill sound now in this both the waves should have same amplitude but their frequency should be different hope you remember what is frequency the number of waves produced in a particular time now in this this case in this particular time within this particular time this also has one wave this also has one wave so their frequency is same okay but only the height of the wave was different now frequency has to be different so amplitude you have to keep same okay let's take two lines for this also and for this also so for low pitch frequency will be low frequency will be low means the wave should be quite longer like this okay so this is a low pitch sound a high pitch sound should be much closer the frequency should be more is it clear children so this is how you can differentiate diagrammatically a low pitch sound and a high pitch sound see the frequency in this particular time here only one wave is produced but here two waves are produced that's why this is of high frequency number of waves produced in particular time is more in this so this is high frequency this is low frequency okay make sure you keep the amplitude same that's why i've kept two lines here two lines above and below also now this leads to this factor affecting what is the factor affecting frequency of vibration okay frequency of vibration determines the pitch of a sound okay higher frequency means high pitch shrill sound low frequency will produce low pitch or flat sound okay so here also they have written grave you can write flat and this is shrill sound is it clear children and again factor affecting is here pitch of a note depends on its frequency okay so examples and all you can cut it off subjective nature objective nature you can cut it off come to the third definition that is quality or timber and waveform quality or timber and waveform now this is a totally um, new thing for you now suppose you are taking two guitar two identical guitar identical means every way both are same okay they are made of the same company and uh, they were made together and like everything is similar okay two two identical guitars you have but still and you are playing the same chord okay means you are playing in a particular frequency but still they will produce different sounds though they are two identical guitars and you are playing them at same amplitude and same frequency but still their quality will be different quality will be different is it clear children so two identical guitars or any musical instruments i am playing them at same amplitude and same frequency but still their quality will be different so what does quality mean quality means every musical instrument produces a particular shape of waveform okay waveform means the uh, form of wave or okay so every um git uh, every instrument maybe this guitar one may produce so you have to draw two waves of same amplitude and frequency only the shape of wave have to be different keep that in mind okay 
so if you're taking two lines here here if I'm drawing this shape wave in this I should draw another shape triangular wave this is called sine wave I can draw a triangular wave or even there is a square wave is also possible so this kind of wave so this is guitar 2 they are identical guitars played at the same amplitude and same frequency but still because of the shape being different or the waveform shape is different they will produce different sound okay so this is how the definition goes Qual the other name for quality is timber and it depends on waveform okay quality of timber of a sound is that characteristic which distinguishes two sounds of same loudness and same pitch but emitted by two different instruments even though they can be identical instruments but they produce different sounds because of the change in their waveform so this is the definition then the diagram is here okay so two sounds of same amplitude and same frequency but of different waveform and then quality of a musical sound depends on the waveform depends on the waveform okay so rest all you can cut it off again it is uh, not there so third factor in the next page i want you to write third factor quality or timber okay first will be the definition then the diagram then the factor affecting is it clear children okay so if you can do it along with me as you watch the video that will be better you can just finish off the work i'm not giving any other homework for today as you watch the video just note this down okay so with this this chapter is over okay so now now listen carefully b part so i hope you have drawn okay um, along with me in the video now for B part is very important and very confusing also. Yeah. So many of you have the answers that you sent. There were some mistakes. I sent some corrections. Some of you. Some of them I don't. I have not sent. Um, now I am just going to say the general mistakes you all had made. And listen very carefully. There will be an oral test on thursday's zoom test during thursday's zoom period there will be a oral test of this chapter okay don't panic don't get worried i'll tell you specifically which questions to study okay so then okay i'll give you a clear idea what to study and how to study please don't get scared or worried ma'am is telling in the last minute and all that just you take half an hour to study this portion that's enough because i don't want you to um, go to another chapter without making this clear if only you will study you will be able to understand your um, understand the concepts clearly okay so make sure you study it so as i told you the for the first part the okay you can study from this notes that i gave okay natural or free vibrations definition diagram and then those examples okay so damped vibration definition diagram example forced vibration definition i hope you would have written from the book and resonance also you would have studied from the book now what all you're going to study is all those questions that you wrote so this you will study from the notes children definition and all this of all the three types okay this then next thing is question number answers of question number 26 27 28 leave of 29 we have not done 29 then 30 31 32 30 31 32 okay so um now regarding this question that is question number 27 in your exercise these two diagrams are not same children see in this this is A, B, C and D. Right. 
okay here a and b are of same length but in this exercise question a and d are of same length so d will enter into resonance b and c will be in forced vibrations now many of you have made mistake in that and even the answer for this okay it's all um, here and there in this part in this from these two paragraphs you have to find the answer and write okay many of you had made some mistakes in this and you have written wrongly so what i have done is i have written the answer okay i will be uh, sending up sending this in the attachment so it is exactly the answer for this question according to the parts asked what is your observation about the vibrations in pendulum d so pendulum d starts vibrating with small amplitude and ultimately occurs the amplitude same as pendulum a give reason for your observation when amplitude of pendulum d becomes max sorry in observation itself there are two observations when am amplitude of pendulum d becomes maximum a becomes minimum and then after that amplitude of d decreases a increases and this continues that's the observation then the reason they have asked reason is pendulum d comes into resonance because natural frequency of d is equal to that of a being of same length it's very important to write this because they are of same length their natural frequency is same because of that they are coming into resonance that's why d is why d was vibrating with a larger amplitude and then the other reason why they are switching over this one there is an exchange of energy between a and d in your book more are given it's enough if you write there is an exchange of energy between a and d now come to the c part what type of vibration takes place in pendulum b and c i want you to write forced vibrations with smaller amplitude forced vibrations with smaller amplitude so and then d part reason since the natural frequency this is not there in the book children I, you have to write this only since the natural frequency of b and c are different from that of a being of different length so it's important to write being of different length they undergo forced vibrations of smaller amplitude is it clear children so for question number 27 i, I will be sending the notes uh, sending this uh, answer you can study from there 28 tuning fork for that one also i know in your book they have given it quite elaborate you turn to page 163 and put a tick mark near the example number 4 example question number 4 the same thing but they have asked in a different form a vibrating tuning fork is placed over the mouth of a burette filled with water the tap is opened and the water level gradually falls what do you observe what do you observe as the water level is allowed to fall at a particular level loud sound is heard then name the phenomena resonance when does it happen it happens when natural frequency of air column becomes exactly equal to the frequency of vibrating tuning fork the air column vibrates with a large amplitude and you hear a loud sound is it clear children now study from this don't study from this part or what you have written you all have messed up and in this it's quite confusing and they have given too much in detail but this i feel is very clear what do you observe name of the phenomena and why do you observe reason for your observation clearly okay and then there's one more extended observation if the water level falls further will you notice the same observation again yes okay if the water level falls further again a loud sound is heard when length of air column becomes 3 times the original length okay till this it's enough if you want you can write also why it is again getting into resonance at this stage again natural frequency of air column will become equal to the frequency of vibrating tuning fork okay so the main thing is when the length of air column becomes 3 times that's the important thing is it clear children so uh, i think you can study clearly now these three answers then coming to question number 30 31 and 32 30th almost uh, in the answer it's clear two points point number 1 and point number 2 okay so 30th you can study directly 31st also fine 32nd again 
many of you had made mistake how do you tune your radio set to a proper station particular station name the phenomena in doing so and define it see, see children many in every question mostly name and define it define it means you have to write the definition of resonance where is the definition of resonance this one this is the definition of resonance please memorize it properly in almost every question of this they ask define it define it okay so from second line till this is the definition okay now come to this page the answer i'm i'm just discussing answer of 32 page 162 so there's a big explanation and i know it's quite confusing it's quite high level for you but for this answer specifically you have to write these lines starting from here and to some children i think i told this part please change it this is not the part not the first part please start writing from here okay i'm so sorry i uh, made a mistake this is not the part you have to write you have to write this part when we want to tune a radio receiver we merely adjust the values of the electronic components to produce vibrations of frequency equal to that of the radio waves which we want to receive when both the frequencies match resonance occurs and then again there's a big story you can just write and only that channel is received resonance occurs and only that channel is received is it clear children so resonance and radio and tv receivers it's enough if you study this this part is quite um, deep you'll okay so you don't have to study that only this part and then the conclusion you can write it and then the second part name the phenomena resonance define it you will write the definition is it clear so six questions from this 26 27 28 30 31 32 and anyway this fifth question i told you for start for this question number 28 i told you to study this so anyway this will be done seventh also example number seven this is another important thing based on this example resonance in machine parts resonance in machine parts so in this two things at a particular speed particular speed natural frequency of vibration of some part of the vehicle becomes equal to the frequency of vibration of piston of engine two things part of a vehicle some part of vehicle and then piston of engine when their frequencies become same then at a particular speed that will happen then they enter into resonance and that particular part starts vibrating with a larger amplitude to stop this what the there's another way suggest one there's another part of the question suggest one way by which the rattling sound can be stopped to stop the rattling sound the speed of the vehicle should be changed is it clear children so this answer also you're studying so six from this seven eight and then nine and ten is it clear so these 10 questions alone you're going to study and i will test you in some form now don't ask how will you take oral test you will ask us to write you'll ask us to show you don't worry about it all that you have to do is study these 10 question answers is it clear children i don't want to waste much time now please start studying it might take half an hour to one hour please study and finish it now itself even if you're not sending those characteristics of sound ka images now it's fine but make sure you prepare for this oral test thank you so much